All right, and we are back. We're gonna go through several problems here uh, all together in this one. Um, so this one's number 10. It just says to expand this. Uh, and this is a uh, quadratic. It's gonna end up being a quadratic. It's not too bad. So this squared means we've got two of these things multiplied together. This is 3x plus 20 times 3x plus 20. So from here, we're going to do our foiling method. Um, or you could do the entire distributive method if you wanted, but we'll just do the foil method. 3x times 3x, that's multiplying the firsts. That's 9x squared. The outers, 3x times 20, those are the outer terms. That's plus 60x. The inners, multiplying the inner terms here, that's another 20 times 3x, which is 60x. And then the lasts, that's 20 times 20, which is 400. You just got to simplify this down. So this is 9x squared plus 120x's. We're combining those two like terms. And then plus 400. And that's it. Um, the next problem, it says factor completely. 9x squared minus 36. This is a uh, difference of squares. This square is 3x, and this one is 6. So when you have differences of squares, they factor really nicely in this common pattern. You can write your two parentheses out, writing down the squares like this. Right, the first one and the second one, we just write them down like this. And then we add a plus sign in one of them and a negative sign in the other. That's it. It's really not much work aside from just right there. <laughs> um, if you wanted to be careful and check your work, you know, you can multiply this out. And you would, you would get exactly what you started with. So there's not much to this problem. Um, let's see what the next one is. Oh, perfect. Multiple choice. So we'll go ahead and do this one. Um, is this the graph of a function y equals f of x? So there's a lot of different options here. <laughs> they all are suggesting something about a test, a vertical or a horizontal line test. So, first off, I notice something about this um, about this vertical line in particular. Uh, I notice here it only touches one time. Over here it doesn't touch at all. And anywhere over here it touches this graph twice. Which means if I plug in, say, this x in particular, I have two outputs. Right? I have this output, y1, and I have this output at a height of y2. And that's not OK for a function. A function is only supposed to have one output for any one input. So this, this is not a function. And what kind of line did I use here? That's the vertical line that I used. So the answer is no, it's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. The vertical line test says if any vertical line touches the graph at just one place, then you have yourself a function. So for me, it's kind of easy. I just grab this vertical line and I slide it across the graph. And I notice you know, over here it touches twice. So that, that, that it's failing the line test there. For you, it's a little harder. You, know, you gotta think about where to put the vertical line to find the places, but it's, it's really not that bad. What is the horizontal line test? The horizontal line test is similar. You create a horizontal line test, and you, you slide it up and down on the graph, and you ask, does, does, the ver does a horizontal line cross twice or more? If it does, then it does not have an inverse. Does this graph have an inverse? Yeah, it does. Um, it does, because the, no horizontal line crosses more than one time. Every every horizontal line, this one, this one, this one, this one, 
this one, this one, it crosses at most one time. So this one passes the horizontal line test, fails the vertical line test, which means this is not a function, but it does have an inverse function. Okay, so that's it for these questions. I'll be back in another video for more.